Tommy was a hero. Like he used his body as a human shield to protect his men in battle, and he was shot several times. Eleven shrapnel wounds refused to be carried off until everyone else was carried off before him. He returned home to really a hero's welcome. Um, he was acknowledged by President Bush in the State of the Union address. He had several minutes standing ovation. There was an action figure after him, a video game after mm -hmm. him, um, and the entire time he was suffering. Um, he had post-traumatic stress. Um, and he was self-medicating with alcohol and pills to, to cope, and his life fell apart. And one night after drinking and taking pills, he left a note for his children, and he drove his truck into a tree. And uh, he survived, um, and uh, when he tells me, he says, yeah, I was really pissed about that. <laughs> and, um, and of course, we're all really grateful, <laughs> and he is now. but. Um, uh, and that was around the exact same time that this opportunity at Justice for Vets occurred. Mm -hmm. And I remember calling Tommy and said, should I do this? And even though Tommy survived, he was facing charges with a DUI mm -hmm. for that suicide attempt. And he said, you have to do this job. There are no veterans treatment courts in North Carolina, and I'm going to jail. And it's too late for me, but you have to make sure that no other veterans have to go through this and I'm gonna help you. I don't know how, but I'm gonna help you. And I felt like that was a sign. So many of the veterans that I've spoken to around the country have said the exact same thing, which I found very interesting. They said, you know, when, you know, when I was in the military, I was part of a unit. I would have my brothers and sisters' backs, and they had mine. And when I came home, I no longer had that unit. And in this courtroom, I got my unit back. And so many of them said, I'm not here just for myself. I'm here to see that my brothers and sisters benefit and that they finish this program. Mm -hmm. um, and that, to me, is magic. <laughs> well, and the, and the whole, like, and you touched on this, but the holistic way, when, when, our, when our most vulnerable, whether it's mental health or whether it's drugs, you can't do it alone. And you, none of us can ever, but yeah. especially when you're struggling with something like Massive. Yeah. And that you guys have, have created this solution where it's very holistic and yeah. you know that you have support is the way I mean it's just the way healing happens we know this right like no one would put somebody alone yeah, yeah. it's interesting I went to a um, a prison in mm -hmm. uh, two weeks ago two weeks ago and um, I did a prison visit so I spent you know part of the day at a prison and I requested to go to a mental health uh, you know, there's a, a section, and it was, I think, about 100 people in that section, and, and seeing how they were, and, and it's necessary for that situation, but they were in cages and um, having their treatment through a cage. And then their time outside, there was a cage for them to be outside as well. And I thought, you know, it'd be very hard to get better in this situation. And it really motivated me even more to fight for what we're doing and to fight to keep people out of that situation in a situation where they can really get the support and the care that they need. And we know people get better through our programs because they have and they are every single day.